It's time for the verdict. The verdict is a lively discussion of current events and legal issues pertinent to Oklahomans. The verdict is hosted by Kent Myers and Mick Cornett. The verdict is sponsored in part by the Able Law Firm. It's time for the verdict. And welcome once again to The Verdict. I'm Mick Cornett, and I'm joined, as always, by one of Oklahoma's top legal experts, Kent Myers. And Kent, we'll continue our series today on Oklahoma's impact players. Yes, uh, we are uh, pleased today to have another in our uh, uh, litany of uh, outstanding uh, business uh, uh, people and uh, professional people. Uh, Dick Rush is the president and chief executive officer of what's called the State Chamber. Uh, Dick is like the state chamber in that in many respects he is a quiet but very effective leader, a person who has as a duty an almost uh, uh, a nonsensical kind of a mission because you would think that you couldn't get it done, but he does get it done and he gets it done very effectively and that mission basically is to bring together the business leaders from Oklahoma City, Tulsa and the rural areas and get them to work together and then to get them to interface with our public policy makers, our, our legislature, the executive branch, and get something done. And I suspect that's a good bit like herding cats. <laughs> I think it's, a, it's something that is easy to say, but pretty hard to do. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, Dick Rush makes a huge impact in this state, and we want our viewers to find out about him today and, and what he is interested in and what he does and how he does it. And there is a distinction between the state chamber and government and the state chamber and your local chamber of commerce. Dick will explain all of yes. that. We're going to meet Dick Rush, the president and CEO of the state chamber. You're watching The Verdict. The Journal Record is pleased to be a sponsor of The Verdict. The Journal Record. Since 1903, the best source of Oklahoma business news and legal information. The Able Law Firm, based in Oklahoma City and recognized nationally for its superior legal ability and very high ethical standards. If you've been injured or believe someone you love has been a victim and needs to talk to an attorney, call the Able Law Firm. Initial consultations are free. The Able Law Firm. In Oklahoma City, the number is 239 <laughs> children deserve a life of hope and love, but sometimes they experience a life of pain, neglect, and abuse. When that happens, each child deserves all the quality, assistance, and representation that can be offered in our legal system. Oklahoma Lawyers for Children has over 500 of the best attorneys and volunteers who donate their time and service to represent children in Oklahoma County. For more information, call 23CHILD. Oklahoma Lawyers for Children, helping to bring hope and love back to the lives of abused children. Welcome back to The Verdict. Thanks for joining us. Mick Cornett with Kent Myers is going to introduce today's guest. Dick Rush is with us today, and he is the president and chief executive officer of the state chamber, has been since 1986. Dick uh, grew up in Illinois, uh, was educated at Southern Illinois University, has been a chamber executive around the country for uh, just about 30 years. In addition to that, he is president of Oklahoma Families for Jobs and Justice, an organization that supports right, the Right to Work initiative. Uh, Dick has worked in, uh, in chambers in California, Texas, before he uh, came to Oklahoma. He is a Vietnam veteran, is married, and has three children 
Uh, Dick, you've got a lot to say, uh, Grace Over. Thanks for taking the time to come join us on The Verdict. We appreciate it. Kent, I'm delighted to be here, honored to be a part of your team, and Mick, nice to be with you as well. Well, let's uh, start out with uh, telling our uh, viewers a little bit about the State Chamber. Obviously, if you're in Oklahoma City, you're familiar with the Oklahoma City Chamber of Commerce or the Greater Oklahoma City Chamber of Commerce and similar organizations around the state. But the name of your organization is just the State Chamber. Can you tell us a little bit about the history and mission of the State Chamber? Absolutely. Thanks for the opportunity to do so. This uh, organization actually is 76 years old this year. It started in 1927. It is a statewide organization whose sole mission is to create an economic climate where business can prosper in the state of Oklahoma. Our stated mission statement is to make Oklahoma the state of choice for business. And that means that every economy of our world is uh, literally founded on a foundation of laws and regulations. Whether you're in Oklahoma, Okinawa, Zimbabwe, or anywhere in the world, that economy that exists must have a solid environment where business feels secure in being able to be profitable. And if we are not careful about ensuring our laws in Oklahoma are that way, then we will not increase our opportunity to advance uh, the jobs in our state and have the salaries necessary for our families. So the mission of the state chamber is truly, in one word, to be a lobbyist, if you will, uh, to work with the state legislature primarily, to work with the governor's office, to work with Congress to ensure that federal law of our country uh, is not uh, driving our businesses out of the country or out of the state of Oklahoma. So to summarize the mission, it really is to ensure looking at the laws every year during the legislative session and making sure that our businesses will stay here and grow and prosper. How long have you been with the state chamber and what do you do on a, on a daily basis or in the in a larger scheme? The beauty of my work is that in 30 years, May 22nd was my 30th anniversary, uh, in looking at those 30 years, there's never been a single day equal to any other. There's no plan. And so the beauty of this is that uh, being a good juggler or a drummer or someone who is multitask uh, is, is really the uh, mission at hand for, for me during, during our work. But in terms of the chamber itself, uh, it has grown over the years. When I arrived here in Oklahoma in September of 1986, uh, I had been working for the United States Chamber of Commerce out of Dallas and the leadership of Oklahoma came to Dallas and, and asked me to look at improving upon the productivity of the institution of the state chamber. We merged during that year with the Manufacturers Association. So in our state, uh, we are blessed to have one unified effort. We're still in many states, there are two organizations and they usually neutralize each, each other at the, at the state house, frankly. But in that merger, the business and the manufacturing and the service industries came together and formed an agenda, a program of action, as we call it, that has been set about over the last 17 years now to ensure the strength of this tool for lobbying for state businesses. And I'm proud to say that our then staff of five has now grown to staff of 21 people. Uh, our then budget of $458,000 annually is now up to about a $2 million budget. And our board, as of last week, has actually just uh, passed uh, our next five-year plan, which is called our Champion Program, that if successful, will increase our annual operation to about a $3 million operation. Your funding comes from where? Our funding is strictly from, well, two sources, really. One is membership dues. Like any chamber, you have to join the state chamber to be a member of ours. If you're a member of a local chamber, that doesn't make you a member of our state chamber. But to buy, by our uh, dues-paying members, our basic budget is established. The second area <coughs> is looking at ways to sell services or products or seminars, and we call that the non-dues income source. We don't take government monies. We're not under contract with any federal agencies or any state agencies, so it's strictly a private sector operation. The, uh, uh, Dick, you and I have been in uh, communication over a 60-90 day period to try to schedule this, uh, this show uh, yes, to be taped and to air at a time that fits with some significant activity of the state chamber and I think we've been successful in doing that. I'd like to bring up on a graphic uh, a five-year business plan for Oklahoma that you have furnished us and I'd like to, uh, when we get it on the screen, I'd like to walk our viewers through it Excellent. very quickly. There are seven initiatives for the five-year business plan for Oklahoma. One, a state of choice for business. Two, Oklahoma Legal Institute for Business and Industry. 
three, enhancing Oklahoma's technology frontier, four, quality of life, fulfilling the promise, five, crossing borders and backyards, six and seven together, the Chamber of Commerce brand and value-added membership. Uh, I wish uh, you'd take each one of these. We won't keep the graphic up on the screen, but tell us what you mean by a state of choice for business. As mentioned earlier, in terms of ensuring our economic vibrancy, businesses must have a secure environment. That means laws must be passed that allow for that profitability in competition to su su uh, succeed in Oklahoma. For that to happen, we must pass the right laws. And to have the right laws passed, we must have legislators who understand the impact of their decisions. And by looking at the process of lawmaking, and many have said that it's like sausage making, you don't want to necessarily see how it's done. <laughs> but the fact is we are bringing uh, what we call the white light of constituent awareness. We're bringing our Oklahoma citizens, our Oklahoma business owners, uh, awareness of what is happening through the legislative process. This first initiative is truly to ensure that we have quality candidates running for the legislative office and to in, in, encourage local businesses from the local communities to run for state legislature is something that we're going to be involved in in finding, grooming, and assisting uh, pro-business legislators to be elected. Regardless of party? Absolutely regardless of party. We are a non-partisan organization. Uh, we don't care if you're an R or a D, or I guess an I even. The fact is that the word business must be the primary reason for your being elected to the, to the legislature. And I've always said that the first letter of that is O, which is Oklahoma. You must be an Oklahoman first. And to take all the rest of the titles and labels and throw them away, because if we work together in the size of state that we have in Oklahoma of roughly three million people, the size of Cleveland, by the way, mm -hmm. over the entire state, we must work together and to have conflicts between neighborhoods, whether it be partisan, whether it be regional, whether it be industrial, any of these titles that disunify our efforts together is something we must avoid. Let me skip down to uh, uh, number uh, four on our list, quality of life fulfilling the promise. What, do you, what does the state chamber have in mind in that regard? There are three components of that initiative. The first being education, education, education. We have been the second state chamber in the nation to uh, implement a pro-education council. Back in 1988 is when we put that in place, and so we were the second state chamber after Florida to actually begin addressing the issue of education reforms. It is something we must continue to work on. So education is the first of those initiatives. The second is looking at the health care problems that are facing our country and our state and the affordability of health care for our businesses to be able to offer that benefit to their member or to their employees. And the third area is the entire infrastructural area, primarily highways, primarily the maintenance and safety of our highways to ensure that that commerce is, is definitely being moving, moving forward. The last one I want to ask you about on these seven is crossing borders and backyards. What do you mean by that? Well, borders represents international and backyards represents rural. We have a very significant initiative for looking at rural economic opportunities by bringing in an analysis of the strengths that we have, by ensuring that the infrastructure is out there in rural America, rural Oklahoma. We're even considering a national rural summit to bring in representatives from 5,700 local chambers throughout the country to look at ways we can solve this problem for our country and our individual states. We know that the, the agricultural community is some of a very, very, important element within our economic possibilities out there and the exporting of that to an international marketplace is why the combination of international and rural component. Let me jump in and get us to our break. We're visiting with Dick Rush. He's the CEO of the State Chamber. You're watching The Verdict. St. Gregory's University has been changing the lives of people like me for 125 years. Affordable, private Catholic education, balanced with dedication to community and service, makes St. Gregory special. We're extremely proud of our students' outstanding academic achievements and our nationally ranked athletic teams. It's when you help a student build a future of balance, integrity, and service that you change a life forever. St. Gregory's, a community for life. 
American Express Tax and Business Services. We're accountants. We do taxes, business valuations, estate planning, and consulting. And we're right here in Oklahoma, working with the owners of small and medium-sized businesses. Steve Wilsey and Stuart Meyer have the resources and the experience. American Express Tax and Business Services. In Oklahoma City, the phone number is 405-843-5311. Bringing out the best in each student, that is the simple goal and tradition of Heritage Hall. The focus on the individual shapes the educational experience at Heritage Hall. Each student benefits from small classes, able, dedicated teachers, a solid academic curriculum, and exceptional co-curricular programs of athletics, arts, community service, and other activities, parental involvement, personalized counseling, and the development of responsibility, integrity, and love of learning. If you want education taught with pride, then you want Heritage Hall. Welcome back. Mick Cornett, Kent Myers back on The Verdict. Today's show is another in a series that we call Oklahoma's Impact Players. This week's guest is Dick Rush. He's the CEO of the State Chamber. You have 5,000 members. You have uh, helped Right to Work become a reality here in the state of Oklahoma. Exactly. Why is Right to Work so important to the State Chamber? This is another tool in our toolbox to attract and grow industry and for companies that indicate to us that it is important for this law to be in place this is another one of those issues that must be presented to site selection leaders who are looking to relocate their companies and we have been told time and time again that if this is not one of our elements within our economic climate that we will be taken off the list before we ever get a chance to tell them about the beauty and benefits of moving to Oklahoma or growing their jobs in Oklahoma. So this will get us in the door of site selection, legal as well as professional people who bring companies to other parts of the country. We've been told by them that this is an important element and we believe it will have a significant impact on the growth of our jobs. Illustrate how it's had an impact here in the first, what I guess, almost two years now. Well, as you know, uh, that we have had the law in place since September uh, 25th of uh, 2001 and we have seen a significant growth of companies that had that law as an important part of their rationale to come here. We are sure that there are many still waiting at the borders of our state until the recent decisions by the courts ensure that this law will remain on the books in Oklahoma. And that uncertainty has, in fact, uh, limited the success of this law. And it's about time for us to put that behind us and move forward in attracting and growing industry within Oklahoma. Well, is there some sort of legal activity now that, that's, hold, that's waiting? Or are we waiting a final uh, verdict? We're to, waiting a verdict, if you will, <laughs> uh, to, to, to use a term. Uh, on the part of our Supreme Court, as you may recall, the union uh, opposition to this law filed suit against it in district court in Oklahoma, and it was ruled constitutional. The appeal then was sent to the Circuit Court in Denver, the Tenth Circuit Court of Appeal, and they have recently, within the last two months, kicked it back, so to speak, to our Supreme Court. To our answer, State Supreme Court. Our State Supreme Court in Oklahoma to uh, render their decision on two questions that they have relative to the language within the law. And we're waiting for their decision, which possibly by the time of this airing may well have occurred mm -hmm. already. But we believe that within the next uh, 30 days or so, we will see a decision of the Oklahoma Supreme Court that will render it constitutional 
or not. And we're waiting, of course, with uh, mm -hmm. great anticipation that the will of the people will be upheld. Dick, uh, there is a perception sometimes among some people that the state chamber uh, is just interested in protecting big business, not in protecting the people. Uh, right to work is an issue that seems uh, not only to uh, address uh, people of all Oklahoma, right. but the people agreed with you by, uh, by passing that at, at an Correct. election. Correct. That must be gratifying for you to have the people express their will in a way that is consistent with the goals of the state chamber. Yes, it is true. 447,072 voters mm -hmm. voted for right to work, which was, of course, 54% uh, of the electorate that turned out to that election. It was the first election after 9-11 in the nation. It was a historic spent election where more money was spent in this election. It was fully ventilated by both sides, allowing the opportunity to speak its position on it. And we are very gratified that the majority did reign and rule. We are hopeful that that majority will be upheld by our Supreme Court. Uh, let me change the subject just a minute. There are an awful lot of things that we saw on the five-year plan. Uh, right to work wasn't even up there, but, or at least explicitly up there. But the state chamber does a lot of work, and you work very hard, but you can't do this all yourself. Oh, that's right. Tell our viewers about the team you've got working with you at the state chamber. Well, first let me say you've hit a very important part. We don't care who gets credit for the victories. We yeah. are very successful if we're, if we're to do anything correctly. We have a great track record of coalition building, and that means working with desperate different entities within our state. Uh, labor and business have come together. You and, can and herd combined. cats in other We words. have been able to herd some cats <laughs> in our day, that's for sure. And, uh, and it's really, uh, you know, you have to have a big brush after that happens. But uh, the, the, the key to herding cats is to have commonality of issues. And once we focus our coalitions on the issues at hand, that's how the, the coalitions are built. We work with the government, we work with other business communities, the whole state gets involved. And our team of professionals, 21 on our staff right now, are, in my estimation, the finest state chamber staff in the nation. And I will literally put them up against even the big guys, the Floridas, the Michigans, the Californias, where they operate a $30 million annual budget to our $2 million annual budget. I like to call us a catamaran with machine guns rather than a battleship <laughs> and trying to make things happen quickly and flexibly and we're very proud of what we call the skins on the wall that are the victories for the private sector which translates into the victories for the workforce, translates into victories for Oklahoma families. Without those salaries there will be no shoes, bread and education for the kids and for our grandkids to have a place to go to work when they get out of our universities, when they graduate and come into the workforce. It is a horrible, horrible shame if the first failing grade they have is when they reach the private sector and they are rejected because they're not well prepared. So all of this translates into improving human progress in Oklahoma families and allowing that to happen. We've got a great team, a great bunch of guys and girls that move this agenda forward. We're going to make that the final word on this show. Dick Rush, thank you for coming by. My pleasure, gentlemen. Thank you, Thank Dick. you so much for your time. Dick's with the State Chamber. Kent and I'll be back with a few final comments after this.
long for the days of loyalty and innocence. Gather your kids around you and take them to the farm for a visit with Timmy and Lassie. Weekdays right here. back to wrap up another edition of The Verdict. Mick Cornett with Kent Myers and uh, boy, Dick Rush, an interesting fellow. Interesting guy, very busy guy. Mm -hmm. Has a lot to do. Uh, I have uh, had some personal involvement with his organization only on the, as, as a volunteer uh, who was kind of on the outside looking in and I was absolutely amazed at the efficiency at which they do their work. They do very significant things uh, very quietly. Uh, Dick Rush makes as big an impact in Oklahoma as any of our impact players, uh, but he probably does it as quietly as anybody and uh, has great respect. Uh, he, is an, uh, he is an adopted, he is a, a, a volunteer Oklahoman, mm -hmm. didn't grow up here, but uh, fits right in. Uh, he makes that state chamber run very, very efficiently, and they get some uh, marvelous results. I would imagine our viewers learned a lot about the State Chamber today, and if you'd like to learn more, you are encouraged to go to their website. It's okstatechamber.com. And as always, we'd like to draw attention to our own website, theverdict.tv. Go there, check out the, today's show, and give us a, a sample of what you'd like to see on a future show. Kent and I would love to hear from you. Thanks again to our guest, Dick Rush, the CEO of the State Chamber. For Kent Myers, I'm Mick Cornett. We'll see you next time on The Verdict. You've been watching The Verdict with Kent Myers and Mick Cornett. The Verdict is sponsored in part by the Able Law Firm.